There's many believers today in Christian circles that don't think they have the ability to lay hands and heal their brothers and sisters the way the apostles did and the way the disciples did in the times of Jesus. There's many pastors that teach that that died away with the apostles. When they passed on, they said that healing passed on as well. So now in churches are filled with converts, but there's very few disciples. And what's the difference, right? A convert is someone who is converted to Christianity, someone who gives their life over to Jesus and becomes a Christian. A disciple is someone who remains in his word and trains. In, you know, in, in today's uh, verbiage, we would call it, you know, disciples good, but it's like an apprenticeship. You don't go to an apprenticeship, sign up for an apprenticeship, and suddenly you can do the work. You have to commit, you have to learn, you have to train, you have to follow what the master is doing and do what he does to become like him. So I just want to give you a couple verses to prove to you that you are in fact a disciple of Jesus if you remain in his word and you're able to do what his disciples did if you remain in his word. Let's start here in Matthew 10.1 And when he had called unto him the twelve disciples he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Matthew 10, 7 through 8. And as you go preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Matthew 10, 24 through 25. The disciple is not above his master, nor the servant above his Lord. It is enough for the disciple to be as his master to be as his master and the servant as his lord if they have called the master to the house of Beelzebub how much more shall they call of them of his household see and these are these pastors and preachers today that they believe that the devil has power you know they'll, they'll go ahead and jump on that verse that says in the end times there'll be lying spirits showing lying signs but for some reason they think the guy that lives forever doesn't do it anymore? Baloney. Matthew 11, 4 through 5. Jesus answered and said unto them, Go and show John, referring to John the Baptist who was in prison at the time, John again those things which ye do hear and see. The blind receive their sight and the lame walk. The lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Matthew 12, 28. But I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. Okay, this here is Jesus is saying, if I cast out devils by the Spirit of God, right? Who did the works? Who did the works when Jesus healed? The Holy Spirit, which came upon him after his baptism. And Jesus even said, I cast out devils by the Spirit of God. Matthew 16, 19. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. See, this refers to our authority. As we walk on this earth, we have this authority to bind and loose. Continue. And whatever thou shalt loose on the earth shall be loosed in heaven. Matthew 10, 18, 18 through 20. Truly I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Here he's repeating himself. Just a couple verses away. And whatever ye shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. So Jesus is alive. He's still here. The Father is still here. We're still able to bind. We're still, still able to loose. We're still commanded to lay hands, raise the dead, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, preach the gospel. 
Mark 1, 15, and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. So you have to believe the gospel. You have to believe what's written. Now, pastors and preachers will tell you, yeah, yeah, Jesus said go preach the word. But they deny the rest of it. Laying hands, raising the dead, cleansing lepers. That part they omit. But they go ahead and but the part about preaching the gospel is still true. Come on. Jesus preached his gospel and it was confirmed with signs and wonders. It was God working through him and God working with him. And it's the same for us. He is our master. We are his disciples. Oh, you say, well, uh, there's no more disciples because whatever. Whatever your, whatever your reason is. Here's disciples other than the twelve, right? Matthew 27, 57. When the evening was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea named Joseph, who also was himself... I'm sorry, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. Mark 16, 17 through 18. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Do you believe? Do you believe in God? Do you believe God's word? Do you believe what the Bible says? God's not a man that he should not lie, so do you believe it? Jesus says, In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Do you believe them? Do you believe them? These signs shall follow them that believe. I believe it. I believe it. I've done it. I've seen it with my own eyes. I believe it. Luke 10, after these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also. These are 70 more disciples that Jesus appointed. Right besides the 12 apostles, he appointed at least 70 more. And he sent them two by two before his face into every city and place, whether he himself would come. John 4, 1 through 2. When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John. What? Jesus is making and baptizing disciples? Right, because there's more than the twelve. There's more than the seventy. If you're a believer in God and you do his word, you are a disciple. John 7, 38. He that believeth on me, I believe on Jesus, do you? As the scripture has said... Out of his belly, whose belly? He that believeth on me. Out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. When you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit. That living water is the Holy Spirit. Do you believe you have the Holy Spirit? Yes, of course you do. You're a believer. Then you have to believe that out of your belly, which is where the Spirit resides, shall flow rivers of living water. Flow out for what? To give to others. To touch the lives of others. To show signs and wonders and to back up the word that you're preaching with miracles. Signs and wonders. Next, John 8, 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. The Jews which believed on him. If ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. 9, 27. He answered them, I've told you already, and ye did not hear. Wherefore would ye hear it again? Will ye also be his disciples? See, everyone, they're referencing the group of people, of believers that were gathering amongst him and around him, being his disciples. John 13, 35, By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. If ye have loved one to another. John 19.38 And after this Joseph of Arimathea, being a disciple of Jesus, but secretly for fear of the Jews, besought Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him leave. He came therefore and took the body of Jesus. This was his disciple Joseph. John 20.21-23 20, And said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me, Even so, I send you.
Let me read that to you again. John 20, 21 through 23. Remember this. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you, as my Father has sent me. Even so, I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them. He breathed on them. Breathed what on them? He breathed the Holy Spirit on them. Because at this time, Pentecost had not yet occurred. So he breathed the Holy Spirit on them. Prior to this, they had authority by his name. Now they have the dunamis power that comes with the Holy Spirit as we, after he breathed on them as well. And he said unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retain, they are retained. They have the ability to forgive people, to forgive man at this point, his disciples. Acts 1.15, And in those days Peter stood in the midst of the disciples and said, The number of names together were about 120. There was 100, about 120 disciples. This is, this is shortly after Jesus died and ascended back to heaven. 120. And what were they commanded to do? Go out and make disciples. Acts 6, 1 through 2. And in those days when the number of disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude. Well, now, a multitude isn't an exact number, but it does suggest a lot of people. The twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto them and said, Is it not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables? The multitude of disciples. Go, he made disciples and said, Go and make disciples. And the word of God increased, and the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly. And a great company of priests were obedient to the faith. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus called Ananias. And to him said the Lord in the vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. This is what we should all be saying when God calls us. Behold, I am here, Lord. And I will go. Lay hands, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, heal the sick. Be disciples and make disciples. Acts 9.36 now there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha. He was another disciple, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. The woman was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. Acts 16.1 There came he to Derby and Lystra, and behold, a certain disciple was there, named Timotheus, the son of a certain woman, which was a Jewess, and believed, but his father was a Greek. Okay, so here we've just seen disciples that were not of the 12 apostles. So, who can be disciples? A follower that remains in the word of Jesus, right? Okay, so let's get back over here. I'm pretty sure uh, we left off on Mark 1.15. And saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand, repent ye and believe the gospel. Mark 2, 9 through 10. Whether it's easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven, or to say, Arise, and take up thy bed and walk, but that ye may know that the Son of Man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Right, we've seen that. Mark 3, 13 through 15. And he goeth up into a mountain, and he calleth unto him who, who he would, and they came unto him. And he ordained twelve that they should be with him and that he might send them forth to preach and to have power to heal sickness and to cast out devils. Now these were the initial 12 that he ordained, but it doesn't stop with them. Mark 4:19, and the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word and it becomes unfruitful. Mark 6, 7-9, And he called unto him the twelve, 
and began to send them forth by two and two and gave them power over unclean spirits and commanded them that they should take nothing for their journey except for a staff only, no script, no bread, no money in their purse, but be shooed with sandals and not put on two coats. I called them the twelve and sent them forth. And they went out and preached that men should repent. And they cast out many devils and anointed with oil many that were sick and healed them. Mark 9, 38 through 39. And John answered him, saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name. And he followed not us. Right? He wasn't even part of their group. So he says, And we forbade him, because he followed not us. But Jesus said, Forbid him not. For there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can lightly speak evil of me. See, even then, as Jesus sent out the twelve, there were others who believed and were casting out spirits in Jesus' name, using the authority of his name. And Jesus allowed it. Jesus said, good for him. Don't deny him. So why would he deny you? You're a believer. You're with him. If you've been born again, you're part of the family, right? You're not an outsider as this man was. You're part of the family. You can speak his name. You can use his authority. You can have the dunamis power of the spirit that the Father sent that was in him, which now resides in you. Mark 11, 23 through 25. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say in this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Therefore I say to you, whatever things so whatever things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. And when ye stand praying, forgive. And if ye have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. Mark 16, 15 through 20, he said unto them, Go, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. Do you believe? I believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues, and they shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Who's doing this? He that believeth. <coughs> Excuse me. So then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up unto heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. The Lord working with them. How? Through the Holy Spirit that he sent that lives inside of you. He lived inside of them. The same Holy Spirit lives inside of you. See, you go out and you, it's your job to lay the hands, but it's the Lord's job to do the healing. The Lord works with you and confirms the word that you preached with signs following. Signs aren't leading, signs are following. You lay the hand, the signs follow to confirm the word that the Father sent you to preach. Luke 4, 18 through 19, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel. Who anointed you? The Spirit of the Lord. Right? This is the Holy Spirit that the Father sent. This is the Comforter that the Father sent. And when Jesus returned to the throne, Jesus sent the Comforter back so that you'll never be alone. <coughs> Excuse me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He, who, he, the Spirit of the Lord, has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He has sent me to preach deliverance to the captives. He has sent me 
to preach recovering of sight to the blind. He has to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. The Spirit in you does the work. You lay the hand. You're the body. That You're the tabernacle that carries God. God resides in you through His Spirit. God works through you via His Spirit. You're the vehicle that delivers Him to the unbelievers. You're the vehicle that takes Him throughout this world. Luke 6.40, the disciple is not above his master. Look, we're not above Jesus. We're not above Jesus. But everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. Jesus walked this earth healing others. He taught his disciples how to do it. Who made disciples who were taught how to do it. Who worked with the spirit that the Father sent to dwell in them. The disciple is not above his master, but every disciple that is perfect shall be as his master. So if you're only a Christian believer, if you're only a Christian convert, that's not enough. Become a disciple and be as your master. Luke 9, 1 through 2. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. At this point, he sent his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority. Okay, so you're not of the 12, but you are a disciple and you have authority in his name and now you have the power of the Holy Spirit. When these men were called, they did not have the Holy Spirit in them yet. You have the power, the dunamis power from the Holy Spirit, and you have the exousia power, the authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them forth to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Luke 10, 9. He, <clears throat> he go, <coughs> excuse me, and heal the sick that are there and is saying to them, the kingdom of God has come near unto you. Luke 11, 9 through 10, And I say to you, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asks, receiveth. And it, he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. You're not seeing results when you lay hands? Ask. Still not seeing results? Seek. Still not seeing results? Knock. Keep at it. Luke 11.20 But if I, with the finger of God, cast out devils, no doubt the kingdom of God has come upon you. How was Jesus casting out devils? With the finger of God. The finger is the touch. The touch. What's, what's God touch with? His power, his doing his power, his Holy Spirit, which now dwells in you. But if Jesus, with the finger of God, casts out devils, then you, with the finger of God, can cast out devils. We're made in his image. Jesus is the master. We are his disciples. We are to learn and be like him. Luke 13, 11 through 12. And behold, there was a woman that had a spirit of infirmity 18 years, and she bowed together and could in no way stand up herself. And when Jesus saw her, he called her to him and said unto her, Woman, thou art loosed from thine infirmity. Remember we read, Whatever thou bind and whatever thou loose." will be done on earth, will be done in heaven. This is, this is power and authority that you have to use. Luke 17 through 21. Neither shall they say, Lo here, lo there, for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God is within you. God resides in you through his spirit. God is spirit. And God is love and God is light. God sits in the kingdom. The kingdom of God is within you. Can anything be impossible to you if you believe? 
John 5, 19 through 21. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Truly, truly, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself. You can't do this. You can do nothing but what you see the Father do. For what things soever he doth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loved the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than these, that ye may marvel. Look, you're going to see things that will make you marvel. Greater than the things Jesus did. For as the Father raises up the dead, and quicketh them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. Whoever you want to quicken, who you choose to quicken, you will. John 5, 25 through 27. Truly, truly, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. For as the Father has life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. What life is inside the Son? The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. And has given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. John 7, 24. Judge not according to the appearance, but judge righteous judgment. See, you have the authority to judge, but you must judge in the spirit, not, not in the physical, not in the flesh, not by appearance, but righteous judgment. John 8, 31, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. John 14, 10 through 15, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. This is Jesus talking, the Father that dwelleth in him. How does the Father live him? In spirit, the Holy Spirit. God is a spirit, God is light, and God is love. The Holy Spirit dwelled inside Jesus. The Holy Spirit now dwells inside believers, which makes us adopted into the family via the spirit. We all share the same spirit. So that means as the body of Christ, we are all one. But the Father that dwelt in me, he does the works. Jesus wasn't even doing these healings. It was the Father through the Spirit that dwelled in him. He does the works. The Spirit that dwells in you, he does the works. Not you. He does the works. You're just the vehicle that gets him to the people that needs his help and he continues to believe me that I am in the father and the father is in me or else believe me for the very work's sake Jesus is Jesus is saying look if you don't believe me look at what I'm doing I'm healing people I'm raising dead look at the works I'm doing believe me for their sake he goes on verily verily I say unto you he that believeth on me and the works that I do shall he do also. I believe Jesus. I believe the works Jesus did. And that's why I'm doing the works that he did also, and greater works than thee shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandments. John 14, 26, 27. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. John 15, 7 through 17. If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. The Father is glorified when you bear much fruit. 
so shall ye be my disciples. Let's start over. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified. <coughs> Excuse me, guys. Father glorified that ye bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Continue ye in my love. If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love. Even as, as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love, these things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love hath no man than this, that the man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatever I command you. You, are, you want to be a friend of Jesus? Then do what he commands you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you, that you might go forth, that you might go and bring forth fruit. What fruit? Making disciples. <coughs> Excuse me. And that your fruit should remain. And whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, that ye love one another. John 16, 1. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. Don't be offended by these words. Read the Bible, believe the Bible, and do what the Bible says. John 20, 20 through 23. And when he had so said, he showed unto them his hands on his side. This was after he had risen, after the three days. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them. Why? Because he would breathe the Holy Spirit unto them. Pentecost had not happened yet. And he said to them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. He breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Ghost. Whosoever sins ye remit, they are remitted unto them. And whosoever sins ye retained, they are retained. Acts 1.8 but ye shall receive power. What power? Dunamis power. How? From the Holy Spirit. After that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Last one, guys. Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, who is the Father dwelling in us, who does the works through us, because he loved us. That's all I got for you today, guys. So, hope you enjoyed that. I love you. Take care.